This is the JP Givener Analysis. I'm going to analyze three races and pick out the good, the bad, and the ugly. I'll walk you guys through my thought process, or lack thereof, to further help you guys get better at Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. With that said, without further ado, let's start giving her, bud. Kicking things off, we got Bangkok Rush. This race, I opted to play in the front. While this did pay dividends, which you will see at the end, I would still say I made some mistakes here that are very much worth mentioning. Let's take a look at how I handle the later end of lap 1. You see, in this section, you can either stick to the bottom path or take the top path. This is very unique because while the top path is faster, it is much more risky because of the narrow staircases, let alone the fact that the second staircase is a blind spot. I plan to stick to the bottom path because the player in first is in the best position to take the faster top path and also has a green shell. Considering you can get a double box by taking the top path, if they were to throw the green shell back on the staircase, if I were to follow them up, I wouldn't have a lot of room to avoid getting hit. Also, the top path isn't even much faster to begin with. I know I used the mushroom, but after the player in first place got random greens, I was able to troll the person who was in second. Just like that, your boy's in first place. The rest of the race should be smooth sailing. Well, it's not that easy. You see, when you're in first place, the dreaded blue shell will be gutting for you. That's a problem. Now, I could make an entire video on the subject of playing in first place, but for now, I'll keep it simple. Sure, I'm getting blue shell here, but looking at the minimap, I should only drop down to third place after getting hit. Not to mention, I'm getting hit on a gliding section in which you lose less time for getting hit. And as you can see, sure enough, I'm still sitting pretty in second place. If only I got that super horn a little earlier. Even though I'm not in a bad spot, things are still complicated here. I'm now smack dab in the middle of two players, and I don't have a lot of space to myself. Let's also not forget to mention that the player in third has a star. This is where it's worth mentioning that this is a tag team event, so there are six teams of two. My teammate is the Daisy in fourth place, and he has a bunch of red shells. Keep in mind, when a player is in a star, any and all red shells thrown at said player after the star is activated will pass them. I picked up on this right away, so I knew I couldn't just waste my super horn. I looked behind me, and Sure enough, that red shell was gunning for me, and I was able to horn it. Now, in the same situation, I made a grave mistake. Maybe it was on me for staying in the middle of two players with shells, but let's think about it. In this game, throwing away your protection is really risky, especially just after an item set. By this logic, the player in front of me has no reason to throw their green shell back at me. I did not pick up on this, and I was very nearly the victim of a quick green shell thrown by the player behind me. Thankfully, I didn't get punished for my lack of item awareness, so I knew I had to keep myself safe. I got a really good look at that red shell, and knowing I only have one mushroom, yeah, you can take that second place. Thankfully, the player was not fully out to get me, so I was able to get into third and be in a much safer position, especially since my teammate was in fourth. Well, it was all fun and games until this item set, which served to be both a blessing and a curse. I pulled triple green shells. At first, I was stoked. Obviously, my teammate in fourth place isn't going to throw items at me to take me out, and the odds of the player in second going aggressive to get me out of here are very slim, so that's great. But I can't lie, these green shells gave me quite the ego boost, an ego boost that could have been the death of me in this race. Like I mentioned earlier, taking this top path is a very risky play, and I thought I was in the clear with my triple green shells. At first, I was, and I was able to hit off the player in second place. Little did I know that it was all going downhill from here. Now, I actually made a very smart play in throwing my green shell down the staircase in an attempt to clear the path of any items the player in first place may have thrown backwards. But alas, I missed, and I was presented with a bomb. I was extremely lucky here. I got a shroom boost to recover more quickly, and I only lost one spot to finish in third place. Had the pack been much closer though, I very easily could have lost out on several points this race. Here are the key takeaways from this race. Unless you're in first place or are very confident that you cannot be punished for doing so, do not take the top path. It's faster, but not by much, and the narrow staircases make it too risky. What happened to be on lap 3 is a great example of this. Don't be overly threatened by the blue shell and playing in first place. Sure, it is a guaranteed hit, but if you can get a lead beforehand and or get hit on a gliding section, you should only fall down a couple placements. Make sure you are fully aware of your surroundings upon passing an item set. Give yourself ample time to survey the land both in front and behind you so you have the best idea of what could be coming your way. Next up, we got DK Summit, the most underrated track in the game, at least from a competitive standpoint. This is another race where I stuck to playing in the front, but this isn't Bangkok Rush. DK Summit is very, very unique in this game, as you will soon find out. 
We're kicking things off at the very start of the race. Well, I didn't mean to get a bad start here, this wasn't all bad. One of the most critical parts about this track is starting strong, being able to take this shortcut and establish yourself in the front of the pack. The farther back you are in placements, the more likely you are to get a mushroom from the first item set. Unfortunately, this unintentional power play doesn't have a happy ending. Yes, I did pull the mushroom I was looking for, but I was smack dab in the middle of the pack, and the player next to me pulled a green shell and very clearly was trying to get me out of here. Naturally, I got trailed the moment I land from the cannon. Besides, I only had one coin to kick off the race anyways. This track is really strong when you're starting in the back. That's because you start with either four or five coins and are pretty much guaranteed a mushroom at the first item set, assuming you stag an item box. So I wouldn't look at me missing my start boost as a good thing. Sure, I got the mushroom I probably wouldn't have got had I got the perfect start boost, but when you're in the middle of the madness, you're more than likely going to get taken out. Simple as that. Even so, I was still able to shroom up and find myself in fourth place going into the double shortcut. I knew I had to establish myself in the front because not only is it challenging to make a comeback, but front running on this track is especially overpowered. Here's why. I'm in fourth place going into the first item set on lap two, and by the time I will get there, the players in front of me will have entered the cannon glider. This is a primal position to be in because you can pull items you really should not be pulling in your high placement. As you can see, I got triple mushrooms. This happened because of the distance-based factor in this game's item system. The players in front of me are seemingly so far ahead after entering the cannon that I can pull broken items as if I was really far behind them, even though I'm relatively close. This is the best track to leverage this game mechanic, especially when you're in the front. You'll see exactly why soon enough. Moving on to the double shortcut on lap 2, things seemed great until I got hit by a red shell. Just before I was able to control myself again, I saw that the player behind me had triple red shells. At this point, I'm defenseless, so I have no choice but to let them pass so I can be in a more safe position. But it doesn't end there. I got a really good double shortcut, so I ended up being much closer to the player with the revolving red shell than I would hope to be. Foolishly, I shroomed away in panic, but thankfully, I was not a threat to them in any way. In fact, this was a perfect opportunity to turn a negative situation into a positive. I was already low on coins, which makes sense because coins are so scarce when you're trying to drive fast on this track. So I take the final turn normally, without the half pipe, grab some coins, and use my mushrooms so I don't fall too far behind. During all of this, the player with the red shell behind me passed me, and I was in the clear. Now, I'm even further behind first place as they're entering the cannon. So, despite being in third place, I pulled a star! This is such an amazing item to have this high in the placements, so I knew I had to act fast. Considering how broken the first item set is, and that there wasn't one yet, I knew the possibility of a shock being pulled was more likely than at any other point in this race. So, I did what I had to do. I chained my star into the second set, and sure enough, I was right. I dodged the shock, and the race was mine to lose from there. First place secured! Here are the key takeaways from this race. Coins on DK Summit are scarce. The key to a great start on this track is starting in the back with 4 or 5 coins, in other words starting between 9th and 12th, and securing a mushroom at the first item set to take the snow shortcut. Don't force your way into the pack if you're starting in the front. Leverage the first set on laps 2 and 3 if you aren't in first place. You can pull items that should be impossible to pull in high positions. Always yield to players with red shells while you're defenseless. There are no two ways about it. The shock is most frequently pulled at the first set. If you miraculously pull an item like a star or a bullet bill from the broken first set, assume a player pulled or is going to pull the shock from the first set and make a calculated shock prediction. More likely than not, you're going to be right. Now, I didn't directly mention this, but you gotta time trial this track. Being able to nail the half pipes and the double shortcut is an absolute must, as this is one of the best front running tracks in this game once you've established yourself up in the front. Finally, we have Mushroom Gorge. This race is a little different from the last two where I played in the front. You'll see me operating from all sorts of placements in this race, from the front, to the middle, even to the back. Also, it's worth mentioning that this track is definitely worth knowing how to drive, specifically the numerous super bounce sections where you simultaneously release a mini turbo and trick off the mushrooms and the infamous gap jump to end each lap. Now, I'm pretty solid at this track, but this is the reason why you should not get complacent with your driving because I fell off not once, but twice. I went for the drift off the boost tramp just too late, and I went for the extra coins while attempting the gap jump, coming out net negative in coins. 
Everything happens for a reason, and these silly mistakes actually turn out to be a blessing for me in the long run, but it's still worth mentioning that knowing what you're doing in the driving department is a must, especially in situations where you cannot fall off, else your race is doomed. Since I found myself in the back of the pack after falling off, more specifically between 9th and 12th place, I opted to leverage a strategy known as bagging. Bagging involves cycling through power items and upping your coin count along the way to inevitably make a big comeback. Keep in mind, however, I'm in 9th place rather than, say, 8th place. Why is this so critical? Well, in 8th place, these are all the items you can pull, compared to 9th place, where your options are cut down to only these items. You're much more likely to pull items that will help you catch up, and as you can see, I got just what I needed, a star and a bullet bill. I chained my star at the next item set since I needed to use my bullet bill early if I wanted to take the gap jump at the end of the lap. After all that, I ended up with a star in 7th place. Here's a quick tip when pulling off the gap jump with a star, since it is a bit more challenging. Pull it off with a neutral hop, rather than say, a left hop. You get slightly more air when you hop with your stick in neutral position, making this precise gap jump just a little bit easier. Now, I know I previously mentioned that when you're scrambling for power items, you are much better off being in 9th place than 8th place. And going into the set, I'm in the 8th place position. However, this isn't all bad. That's because this item set is very weirdly broken, almost to the same extent as the first item set on DK Summit. So even though I'm in 8th place and the pack is pretty close, I pulled triple mushrooms and a crazy 8. Pretty awesome if I do say so myself. Since I already made the gap jump with a star, I was pretty confident in my ability to do it again. Plus, since there was no shock, the odds of someone pulling it from the second set were pretty high. So, I used my mushroom before super bouncing to get some extra speed, and just to ensure a player didn't steal my star or run into my bomb, I just spammed all of my items to get my star out. I also knew I would make it to the gap jump in time. But let's not forget, I'm still in the middle spot here, with one more item set to go. I made sure to set myself up not to have to rely on this item set, but sure enough, I pulled triple mushrooms, so I was good to go for the rest of the race. And somehow, despite going for the gap jump in 5th or 6th, I finished in... 2nd place? Truthfully, I was in the 2nd highest spot out of everyone who took the gap jump on lap 3, and the player in front of me had to perform the star gap jump and failed it. But here's a hypothetical example of why I pass so many people when taking the gap jump on lap 3 so often. I always approach the gap jump to land just to the right of the fence, but it's faster to jump over the fence. Here's the thing, yes, it's faster, and applying the neutral hop like I mentioned with the star gap jump does make this method more consistent. But just think about it. Is it really worth going for online? No, it is not. Unless you're in the 0.1% of players who can pull this off consistently every lap, please just take the safe gap jump, man. It is still much faster than driving around, and in a lap 3 situation, you really aren't losing much time. It's actually happened more often than it should where I take the safe gap jump and pass way more people than I should. I rest my case. Unless you're in that super small percentage of players who have absolutely no problem with the fast gap jump, just take the safe gap jump. Here are the key takeaways from this race. Make sure your driving on this track is on point. On top of the gap jump, there are a lot of technical driving strategies you need to implement on this track, namely the super bounce. Don't be afraid to camp in the back for power items in an attempt to make a big comeback. Trust me, with double items being a factor, you have the time. Just don't fall too far behind. Take advantage of the broken second set, it could be your saving grace. Don't forget to neutral hop when taking the gap jump with a star. And aim to the right of the fence when taking the gap jump. The risk of the fast gap jump where you clear the fence outweighs the reward. I hope you enjoyed this video! If you did, I'd really appreciate if you'd leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already. You can expect a lot more analysis videos in the future, believe that. So I hope you come along for the ride because you might learn a thing or two you never would have thought you needed. With that said, until next time, thank you so much for watching, have yourselves a fantastic day, and keep on giving her, bud!